Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel. And in the video today, if you've ever wondered what a tarnation is, as in the expression, what in tarnation? Well, wonder no more. We have the word tarnation thanks to societal taboos against saying certain words, instead substituting in other words that often mean the exact same thing, but for some reason we find it acceptable to say one rather than the other. Humans. In this case, the word is damn, or more precisely, damnation, which gave rise to the euphemism darnation. So, how did the leading D get replaced with a T? In the 18th century, in colonial America, the word tarnal was often used as a more acceptable alternative to eternal, which for a time could itself be used as a form of profanity, from the expression eternal God, not unlike the modern Jesus Christ when used in this sense. To clean up the former, eternal God got shortened to eternal. The aesthetic form of this tarnal ultimately resulted in tarnal. At some point, no one exactly knows when, someone got the bright idea of combining the exclamation tarnal with darnation and the result was Tarnation. The first documented instance of Tarnation was in Royal Tiller's 1790 play Contrast, where the character Jonathan uses it three times, along with the word Tarnal. Why, such a Tarnal cross tyke you never saw. You would have counted she had lived upon crab apples and vinegar for a fortnight, but what the rattle makes you look so Tarnation glum? Tarnation, that's no laughing matter, though. Now the colonel told father and brother, you must know there are. Let me see. There is El Nathan, Silas, and Barnabas. Tabitha, no, no, she's a she. Tarnation. Now I have it, there's El Nathan, etc. Another interesting note is that while Tarnation is most closely associated with the South, and particularly cowboys, it was originally a New Englandism that ultimately spread throughout the new country. And now for some bonus facts. Have you ever wondered what those symbols that we use when we want to spell out a swear word, but not really spell out a swear word, see the example over there to see what I'm talking about are called? Well, in this context, these symbols are known as Grawlixes. And now for another bonus fact. A paper, The Utility and Ubiquity of Taboo Words from the Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts, surveyed the various studies that have been done on swear word rates in everyday English conversation. They found that based on all the studies done to date, approximately 0.5 to 0.7 percent of of all spoken words are swear words. This rate is only slightly less than the rate we English speakers use we, us, and are. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also over there on the right are a couple of other videos that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.